Hi, I'm Nitin Myers and welcome to our ICAST presentation on Deep Learning Based Beam Alignment. Today's presentation is based on joint work with Yu Yang Wang, Professor Nuria Gonzalez Prelchik, and Professor Robert Heath at the University of Texas at Austin. Let me start with some background on beam alignment in vehicular communication. In this section, I'm going to give technical details on the beam alignment problem and I'll discuss channel structure that's very specific to vehicular communication scenarios. Here is a typical vehicular communication setting where the transmitter mounted on a roadside unit is equipped with an n cross n planar antenna array. We assume an analog beamforming based architecture at the transmitter and a single antenna receiver for simplicity. The channel between the two ends is modeled by a matrix H which is of size n cross n. Now, when the transmitter applies a phase shift matrix W in this beamforming architecture, the receiver sees an SNR that's shown here. The goal of beam alignment is to find the best phase shift matrix at the transmitter that maximizes the received signal. Unfortunately, standard techniques like exhaustive search and hierarchical beam search do not scale very well at millimeter wave and can result in a substantial training overhead due to the use of large antenna arrays. In today's presentation, I'm going to show you how the special structure in vehicular channels can be used to accelerate the beam alignment process. In this work, we consider a 2D DFT based codebook at the transmitter. In an exhaustive search based approach where the transmitter applies elements of the 2D DFT codebook, the receiver acquires entries of the beam space channel shown here. Interestingly, beam space channels at millimeter wave exhibit a sparse structure due to the special propagation characteristics of the millimeter wave environment. But let me tell you that there's some additional structure that can be exploited in vehicular communication scenarios. Consider for example, a vehicular receiver moving on lane one of this road. It can be shown that the best beam index corresponding to this receiver traces out a path shown by this blue ball. Now, when we consider an ensemble of receivers moving along both the lanes of the road, we end up with a best beam distribution that's shown over here. This distribution has a non-uniform structure which can result in a reduced training overhead when exploited properly. But how can we exploit this structure in addition to sparsity? That's a big question. Now, there's been a lot of prior work on exploiting the sparse structure of beam space using compressed sensing. I'll now discuss about compressed sensing and I'll show you that standard compressed sensing based solutions may not be well suited to vehicular communication scenarios. In the usual random compressed sensing framework, the transmitter sequentially applies random phase shift matrices for the receiver to acquire channel measurements. All the random phase shift based compressed sensing has nice properties in terms of sparse recovery. It is inefficient when the best beam prior is available as side information. To explain this, let me consider an example of a random phase shift based sensing matrix and let's call it W of 1. It can be noticed from this plot that the beam pattern associated with W of 1 is quasi omnidirectional in nature. And this is a characteristic of random phase shift based matrices with a very high probability. Such quasi omnidirectional beams are not well suited to this beam prior because they focus power also in directions that are not likely to be optimal. Now we are still left with a question of how to exploit this beam prior in addition to the sparsity of channel. Prior work has looked at this problem from three distinct directions. It is either through modifying exhaustive beam search or by using structured random code books in compressed sensing or through deep learning. Although these techniques are useful over their structure agnostic counterparts, they suffer from limitations. Today I'm going to talk about a technique which uses insights from signal processing together with deep learning for faster beam alignment. Our approach is based on a special form of compressed sensing called convolutional compressed sensing. In this section, I'm going to explain about 2D CCS and I'll show you how the code in 2D CCS can be designed using deep learning. I'll now give some intuition into the design of compressive beamforming vectors under side information. Let's take a simple direction of departure estimation problem where the transmitter has a linear array of 9 antennas. For simplicity, we assume that the receiver lies along one of the 9 directions defined by the DFT. The notion of incoherence in compressed sensing tells us that a good compressive beam is one that has equal gain along all these 9 directions. Now, what if the receiver 
is assumed to lie along the four directions shown here with equal probability. In this case, a good compressor beam is not the yellow one but the green one shown here. This green beam has equal gain along the four directions where the receiver is likely to be there and negligible or zero gain along the remaining five directions. Although this green beam is good from a CS perspective, direction of departure cannot be estimated with just this beam. Now the question is how to construct distinct sensing beams that have equal gain along the four directions as shown here. To achieve this, we leverage the property that circulant shifts over a vector preserve the magnitude of its DFT while changing its phase. Let me explain this. Suppose the vector P results in the green beam shown here. Then any circulant shift of P results in the same beam pattern at the discrete locations defined by the DFT. Now this is a great property as we have a way to synthesize several good sensing vectors for CS from just one good sensing vector. Suppose the transmitter applies circulant shifts of 0, 1 and 5 units of P in sequence. In this case, the receiver acquires three channel measurements that are shown here and these measurements can be collected in the form of a vector y minus 2. Similarly, if the receiver lies along direction minus 1, it acquires vector y minus 1. And if it's along direction 1 or 2, it acquires y1 or y2. Now, an interesting property of these four vectors are that they are far away from each other. Their separation is guaranteed when the transmitter applies at least order of log n random circulant shifts of the vector p. Remember that the number of circulant shifts applied by the transmitter represents the length of these vectors. These vectors essentially encode the direction space and this technique where the transmitter applies distinct random circulant shifts of p is called as convolutional compressed sensing. In our recent work, we extended this idea of convolutional compressed sensing to a 2D setting and demonstrated the use of new codes for such an application. In 2D CCS, the transmitter basically applies distinct random 2D circulant shifts of a code P for the receiver to acquire channel measurements. Let me explain 2D CCS using an example here. For this example, the channel and the spatial code have to be of dimensions 3 by 3. Let's say the transmitter applies 0, 0, 0, 1 and 2, 2 circulant shifts of P in sequence. For each of the matrices that are applied at the transmitter array, the receiver acquires a channel measurement which is an inner product between the channel and the code used at the transmit array. So y of 1 here is inner product between H and P, y of 2 here is inner product between H and P circulantly shifted by 0, 1 and y of 3 here is inner product between H and P circulantly shifted by 2, 2. Now, for a given phase shift matrix P or a spatial code P, the transmitter could apply n squared distinct 2D circulant shifts of P to its antenna array. However, it doesn't do that and it applies just three circulant shifts of P that are defined by the set omega. For such a case, the vector of channel measurements at the receiver can be expressed as a subsample version of a 2D circular cross correlation between the channel and a spatial code P. Beam alignment using the 2D CCS pipeline is shown here. This pipeline basically has two stages. The first stage compresses the channel H using a spatial code P followed by subsampling and the second stage estimates the best beam from the subsample version. In this case, the subsampling coordinates are nothing but the set of 2D circulant shifts that are used by the transmitter. Now, a big question at this point is, how do we design the code P? For a simple linear array case where we had a uniform prior, the design of the code P was quite straightforward. We just needed a code P whose Fourier transform had equal magnitude at the four locations where the receiver was likely to be there. Now what about a complicated vehicular communication scenario whose best beam prior looks something like this? In this case, the design problem is to find a spatial code P, which is a 2D matrix of size n cross n, such that its Fourier transform is well consistent with the beam prior shown here. Now this design problem is a challenging one because the spatial code must also be compatible with hardware. For instance, if I have a one-bit phased array, the matrix P is constrained to have entries which are either plus one or minus one. So how do we solve this problem? 
It's a difficult problem and an easy way to solve it is using deep learning. Now I'll explain how the 2D CCS pipeline can be emulated using a deep neural network. First, the compression in 2D CCS, which is subsample 2D cross correlation, can be implemented with a convolutional layer followed by random dropout. Then, the channel measurements are fed into a compress sensing algorithm which can be emulated using a stack of layers. Overall, the deep neural network shown in this white box takes in channels, performs 2D CCS and estimates the best beam index. By training the network with pairs of channels and their corresponding best beam indices, the code P and the weights of the following layers can be jointly optimized. Now, there are some important challenges from an implementation perspective and their solutions are not too hard. For example, 2D cross correlation over complex matrices is a complex operation which can be realized using two real layers, PR and PI, which are matrices of size n cross n. These layers model real and imaginary parts of the code P. The second challenge is on implementing circular cross correlation. Note that standard convolutional layers perform linear convolution, but we can realize circular convolution by 2D padding. The final challenge here is on how to incorporate hardware constraints on the spatial code P while training the neural network. Note that while training the neural network, the entries of P can be arbitrary real numbers. But remember that the transmitter has to apply random circular shifts of the code P which is PR plus JPI which means PR and PI must be such that the code P satisfies hardware constraints such as limited resolution of phase shifters. To solve this problem, we use the idea of weight quantization followed by retraining. The diagram here shows a step into the deep neural network which emulates 2D CCS. The best beam index is encoded as a one-hot vector and by minimizing the cross entropy loss, the weights of the network are optimized. After optimization, the code P may not be compatible with a qubit phased array, where Q is the resolution of the phase shifters. To solve the problem, we first perform qubit phase quantization of the complex weights. As quantizing the weights can deteriorate the performance of the network, the subsequent fully connected layers inside the green box are retrained. I'll now explain how this network can be implemented in a real system. First, the transmitter applies random 2D circular shifts of the optimized spatial code P, which is PR plus JPI, and the receiver acquires compressed channel measurements that are modeled by the vector Y. These measurements are fed into fully connected layers, which is implemented in software, to estimate the best beam. I'll now discuss about simulation results related to our paper. We compare our deep learning based approach with standard random phase shift based CS and the structured random technique from prior work. In the structured random technique, the transmitter first constructs a super code book that has large number of random phase shift based matrices. Then it selects the best M matrices within this set whose 2D DFT magnitudes are maximally correlated with the best beam prior. These M matrices are applied at the transmitter for channel measurements. For simulations, we considered a 16 cross 16 phased array with 3 bit phase shifters at the transmitter. Because it's a 16 cross 16 array, the 2D DFT codebook for this system has 256 elements. The neural network was optimized using a large vehicular channel dataset which had both line of sight and non line of sight channels. Upon training, it can be noticed that the 2D DFT of the optimized code is consistent with the best beam prior. This follows from our intuition on CS, that is, the sensing beam must be spread out along the directions that are more likely to be optimal. Quantizing the spatial code introduced some kind of distortion to the Fourier transform. It can be observed from these figures that the beam obtained after quantization is still consistent with the prior. Due to the smart design of the spatial code in 2D CCS, our approach achieves performance comparable to exhaustive search with just 10 measurements instead of 256. To achieve the same performance, structured random technique takes about 20 measurements and standard CS with the random design takes several more. In conclusion, our paper shows the promise of deep learning augmented signal processing solutions for millimeter wavelength configuration. 
Thank you and I'd be happy to take any questions on this.